Thank you for being with me today. I am um, really excited about this particular interview because it's really dear to my heart. I'm bringing something um, to you and somebody to you that I think is really important. It has been very important in my life. So that's why I wanted to share it. Today, I'm going to have with me Dr. Navjot Kaur. She practices integrative medicine at the Tustin Longevity Center in Tustin, California. She has a Bachelor of Science in Chemistry from the University of Irvine in California. Simultaneously, as she was doing that, she completed her pre-med prerequisites and went on to get a doctorate in naturopathic medicine from Southwest College of Naturopathic Medicine. So that alone tells you a little bit about how formidable she is, I think. It is my experience that Dr. Kaur is a doctor who through tremendous knowledge and kindness imparts the importance of nutrition and lifestyle in overall health. And she's committed to getting to the root of the problem with her patients. I have personal experience with that. She has um, helped me get to the root of what sometimes have been my problems. So as a result, I thought it was very important for me to share her with you. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to talk to Dr. Kaur right now. I'll let her tell you more about herself. And um, let me bring her on, Let's see how we do this. Um, I think we got it. <laughs> um, welcome Dr. Kaur, I'm so happy to be here with you today. Thank you so much for having me on, Margie. It's such a pleasure to share my story and what it is we do and so we can help more people. Thank you. Yes. Um, I know there is a story behind what you do. So can we begin there? Can we begin yes. talking to you about how it was that you began doing what you do? Yes, yes, absolutely. It, it was quite some time ago, I was actually at UCI already. I started my first year there. And at that time I was dating my husband and he was getting a lot of sicknesses. He was getting a lot of sore throats, cold sores. He was getting sick often. And when he went to his primary care physician, they did some blood work and they found his white blood cells were low. White blood cells, they help the immune system so we can fight against infections, colds. And he was pretty much told he should see an oncologist because he likely has some sort of cancer. We, we you know, that, that's such a scary thing. You're 19, 20 years old and you, you don't want cancer or anybody to have cancer. So immediately we're like, maybe there's some things we can be looking at. Maybe we can work on our diet, nutrition, anything we can support the immune system with to help you. So we came and saw Dr. Elithorpe. She's one of the providers at Test and Longevity Center where I work now. She's the medical director here. When we saw her and she went through his thorough history and learned more about how a lot of his illnesses, he was sick a lot even as a kid, having to take antibiotics. Not that antibiotics are bad, Sometimes we need them, but overuse of that can destroy your gut health and immune system. I can vouch for that. Yes. Okay. So she did a history and she learned that. And then she asked him about his diet. He was eating fast food. He wasn't eating healthy foods cooked at home, whole foods. So she did even like a food sensitivity panel on him. And she found he had more than 30 food sensitivities. And it was a lot of stuff he ate so often. So he had what we would call a leaky gut where there's a lot of inflammation happening in that gut. So his body isn't absorbing food well. He also had some thyroid issues. He was also exposed to some um, metals like mercury, lead, probably from the fillings he had from the past. So she recommended that he works on his diet for three months. He cuts out the food sensitivities. He does puts in some nutrients, works on his thyroid. Within that three months, his white blood cells went from like a 1.5 to a 3.5. What is normal? What, what would be the... Right. It, it should be above a four. Okay. Yeah. Oh, he was very low. Exactly, exactly. And it just shows you that diet and proper nutrition can provide such a big help and just within a few months. Mm -hmm. That's, that's we, amazing. Right? And yeah. we never 
with the oncologist because it wasn't necessary anymore. He was doing well and he's to this day, he's very healthy. So, yeah. Wow. So that propelled you to want to get into this, this type of medicine then? Correct. I, I actually didn't even know what integrative medicine was. They don't teach you that in school. Right. So that's my question. What is integrative medicine? Tell us what that is. Yeah, so I didn't even know. And that's when I started questioning. I'm like, I asked Dr. Alpha, can I come shadow you so I can learn about this? And it's actually, then she's like, yes, you can. And when I did, I shadowed her. I started actually working here in the front office, just seeing that so many people were getting better with proper diet and nutrition, these protocols. So, and I wanted to study that. So I learned about what a naturopathic doctor was. I didn't know what that was beforehand. And you get the same medical training as a doctor would. You learn the same anatomy, physiology, prescription medications, the treatments, but you also learn how to treat the body with herbs, diet, homeopathy, and, or, and, and anything holistic. So it's a, it's a lot more extended. Right. So yeah. you're treating the whole person. You're not... You're not seeing the person as individual ecosystem, so to speak, Maybe yeah. the digestive or, or the, the endocrine, or it's the whole system is what you're looking for. Exactly, at. exactly. Okay. And going after the root cause of the problem, right? Like, because for him, yeah, they could have given him something to boost up the white blood cells, but after there's like an injection, they do with like chemotherapy, typically white, white blood cells drop, then they give you an injection to boost that up. But it would have dropped it off when he stopped the injection. It wouldn't have helped the cause. Right, so it, what you're talking about then is getting to the root of the problem. Why, why the, the illness? Why the affliction in the first place, right? Exactly. Because otherwise it just will come back. It yes. manifests itself maybe in another way, right? Right, right. right. So, okay, so so when you're when you're so walk us through the process of, sure. of what it is to to investigate, what it is to diagnose and, and um I don't know what the proper word is, but but to uncover what mm -hmm. the root of the problem is. Right, right. Well, especially when I see my first patient, like a new patient come in, we do a, an hour visit because you want to get to know the person better, right? You want to start from, I start from the beginning when they were born, even your birth matters. Yeah. Having a healthy birth, how, if it's a vaginal C-section, that can also affect your immune system. So you want to get to know that you want to get to know their stressors and what medications they've been on, how their eating habits were going up. So then it can guide you on what testing to order. And when I do tests, we do very detailed. Sure, I can order like your cholesterol, sugars, the basic things, but I want to look at your thyroid hormones in detail, your sex hormones, and even the stress hormones in a lot of details and vitamins so we can see what the deficiencies are. So that would, that would indicate, um, for example, um, yes. I'll, I'll use my own case. Sure. When I came to you, I was very low in vitamin B. My blood, why my white blood cell count was low. This was just recently too. Um, and within, and there were other issues. <laughs> I know that I had what, what's called leaky gut. I mean, but I, I'm, I, I was amazed that within a month, I was feeling better. The reason I went was because I was so, um, so tired. And I had, yes, I had beat MS, but, and I knew what fatigue was. So this wasn't the same kind of fatigue, but I knew my body was out of whack, basically. Mm -hmm. And within a month, I could feel the difference. Now, it was by addressing those vitamin deficiencies, right? Mm -hmm. And it was by now I want, can we talk a little bit about the other aspect, the allergies, you know, because yeah. I, I think that's so important because I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Dr. Mm -hmm. Kula, but I think if we're allergic to something, it triggers an autoimmune response in our body. Am I correct? Correct. 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 So can you talk to us about that? Sure, sure. And right nowadays, you see a lot of people struggling with autoimmune disease, especially Hashimoto's. It's a thyroid autoimmune disease. But that occurs when there's body fighting itself because of an inflammatory response, whether it's stress related or you're putting in a food that's causing inflammation in the body. In the conventional world, we look at allergies like 
immediate allergies, they're called IgE responses. But one would already know that because it's typically things like penis, you would eat it and right away you would have a symptom. Where we wanna look at an IgG sensitivity, which can even take three to four days to show up in a symptom. And it, honestly, I think those are worse because they're killing you over time and you don't even know it. Right. They're very silent, right? Yes. Yeah. And yeah. you don't have that immediate reaction. Right. So you don't know, like maybe I had chicken a couple of days beforehand and I wouldn't have connected chicken would cause abdominal pain, not only just gut health, but it can affect your energy, your mood, rashes. It can affect the whole body. And, and ener energy is a big one because that's what I found is my energy level. That's when I know that I've eaten something that isn't very good for me. It's not a big manifestation of symptoms necessarily. Right. It's, right. it's subtle, but yeah. in subtlety, you know, the brain fog. Yeah. That's a big one too. And, and I, you chalk it off to uh, chalk it off to other things, but not necessarily. Not necessarily. Right? Yes. Like I had a patient just recently, she has a four-year-old daughter and she said the past four years, she hasn't felt like herself. It feels like a fog. She doesn't even know how she's gotten through the four years. And I, she said she didn't want to have more kids because she, she thought that that's how motherhood feels. Mm. And that's sad. That's not normal. No, we don't live. We're not living our full potential that way. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And that when she came in, I did the food sensitivity test on her. She cut out the food sensitivities. We worked on her thyroid and she feels like a new person. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I can vouch for that. It makes right? all the difference in the world. We tend to think that food is just that we need because we're hungry and to keep right. us alive. Right. I think for many years we were told that, you know, for example, I would say I'm eating chocolate, but, but oh, don't worry, it's not going to affect you or, you know, your skin, things are happening in your skin. Oh, no, it's not because of the diet. It's because of something else. Right. Never was, were things tied to the diet, at least when I was growing up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's only been in the last maybe 20 or 30, maybe, and I'm older, <laughs> but maybe in the last 20 or 30 years that you're really hearing more about that. And not even 30, I would say more like 20. Right. Am I correct I, there? Yeah. I agree with you, yes. Because... It was it was an anomaly for somebody to say that mainstream mainstream mm -hmm. medicine was not acknowledging that at all. No. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so so if a person is feeling um, that maybe they do have um, some sort of inflammation in their brain in their body, um, what 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 are the what, what would I do? I know what I did, but can you tell people what they need to do when they're feeling that way? Yeah. yeah, you can find any like local integrated physician near you if you wanted, or even a naturopath, you can look for them. And I would request for them to do a immuno, I like immuno labs, that's a company we use, and they test the IgG food sensitivities. Okay. I would definitely start there, but even ask them to test like your thyroid in more detail. When we do thyroid testing in the conventional world, they're only looking at TSH, but that's only the signal from the brain to the thyroid. What we need to check is also free T3, free T4, and reverse T3. We need to see what the thyroid itself is doing. I I see that gets missed all the time. So that, that I'm passionate about everybody being sure it gets checked. Well, it seems like more and more, I hear more and more about people having thyroid issues, right? Yes. So is that, do you think that's tied to diet? I do. I, cause I, you didn't see that before, but typically it was genetic, right? Like if your parents had it, then sure, maybe that can happen. Now I think our food industry is so corrupt. We have so many chemicals and pesticides in our food that a lot of us are developing hypothyroid or, or autoimmune issues. Yes. Um, going back to the food. So what do you suggest? For example, I, well, I won't say, let me, I'll let yeah. you say, <laughs> yeah. what do you suggest when we're talking about when we're in a grocery store? Right. And we're looking at our choices. Right. Um, what do you suggest? Right. I, I say focus on filling your cart with most of the vegetables, right? And we want to buy organic when we can, when it's available. 
And I like it. You could even look at that dirty dozen list because it tells you which ones we should definitely buy organic because some have more pesticides than others. But I would focus on that, getting a lot of vegetables, some food. I'm okay with berries. I don't want to do a lot of fruit because fruit can also have a lot of sugar. So I don't want to overdo it with that. But I'm okay with people even eating like if organic meats are an option, organic chicken, or if they wanted free range chicken, that's even better, less chemicals. Mm -hmm. And then if you chose meat, like steak, I want to get it, um, you know, grass fed, grass finish. And even the salmon should say wild Alaskan salmon so we can avoid the mercury in the fish. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, the mercury is everywhere, right? When it comes yes. To it, unfortunately. Yeah. Okay, so I think, let me ask you, um, we're that we're talking about food, but then mm -hmm. let me ask you, in integrative medicine, do you look at the whole person? I mean, you were saying that you, you get, you find out about their life as children. That, so that tells me that part of that is also how much, how is your life going? Where, where, how that the outside world affects you, right? Right. And, um, what, to what degree, what, what, I mean, what would you suggest for somebody that is not paying attention to that? Right, right, right. Like I, I, I'll always ask people, how's your sleep? What time do you go to bed? Because even not, not having a good routine can really, you know, harm the hormones, harm how you're feeling. But people don't even realize that most people I have, they tell me, oh, like midnight. I'm like, no, you can't do that because there's a hormone called cortisol. And we can get another, we need that hormone in the morning to get us out of bed and give us energy. But it could spike up past 11 p.m. at night if I'm staying up at that time. So that could affect your entire day the next day. You can feel fatigued, you can feel irritable, but you, you would never relate it to your sleep. You're thinking maybe I just don't feel the same. Or I ate something, right? Something. Yeah. Because <laughs> we, now we tend to blame it on the food too now. <laughs> Oh, yes. I do. I very conveniently will say, oh, I must have eaten something that I shouldn't have, right? But no, because I am a bit of a night owl. So yeah. yes, I have to be really mindful of getting to bed earlier because I get a second wind in the evening mm -hmm. yes. and um, I feel it the next day. Right. Yeah. And it's not just the next day, is it? No, 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 no. It can have long-term effects, right? Because then if we continue this pattern, then you're, eventually your body wouldn't be making the cortisol in the morning or in the afternoon. So you're going to feel sluggish, maybe taking more naps. and yeah. So what does the cortisol do? Cortisol helps with our energy. However, if we have an imbalance of that and I'm not making proper amounts in the morning and too much at night, it could also affect your thyroid. For some people, it could also cause weight gain, affect the mood. Yes. Okay. So that's why mm -hmm. lately I've been hearing that if you don't get enough sleep, you, you gain weight. Exactly. That's that connection. I didn't know that that was a connection. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I think if we can all focus a little bit more on like our routine, right? Maybe getting to bed at a good time. You don't have to take any fancy supplements, just maybe keeping the room dark away from your cell phones and getting a good night's sleep. And then maybe in the morning when we get up, maybe do your little gratitude. I always do my little gratitude journal just to be thankful of everything we have, right? And then I'll do some, a little bit of exercise, whether it's a walk, some yoga, some, you know, some sort of exercise to kind of wake the body up and make that cortisol on my own. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So that sounds logical, right? Yes. Okay. So we're talking about our daily routine, the importance mm -hmm. of being in a routine for the body yeah. to know what's coming on a right. regular basis, right? Exactly. So I have been um, doing intermittent fasting. Yes. And I want, I want some information from you on intermittent mm -hmm. fasting. There are so many differing opinions, so many other, and I want, I want to go to the source. <laughs> so I want to ask you, um, talk to us about intermittent fasting. Sure, sure. I, I love intermittent fasting. What happens is when we eat sugar, our body makes insulin and insulin's job is to break the sugar down but it stores it in our fast cells later on for energy because it thinks sometime in my life I'm going to be going into a starvation mode because that's what we did when we you know 
first came about. And it, it, it should need the storage to build up so we can get energy from that. But over time, everything has changed, right? Now we have food available all the time, so we're not starving. And we have built up a lot of that insulin in our fat cells as storage. We all have it. I like the idea of intermittent fasting if I can stop eating even like at 7 p.m. and not eat the next day until about 11 a.m., give my body a 16-hour break. We could burn through that insulin we have. It can help with our hormones. It can help with energy. Definitely, it's going to help people with weight loss. Right. Now, I was reading something about it resetting the immune system. Right. What um, can you tell us or can you tell us a little bit about that? I do find a lot of times and, you know, there's so many risk factors for cancer and everything, but they're also finding a lot of times high levels of insulin can also cause more cancer cells to grow. So I always advise my cancer patients or anybody to keep their insulin levels below a three so we don't have to worry about that. Right. So that's what I think happens is if I'm fasting, my storage won't build up and I can keep my insulin level really down so I can help my immune system. So that's where that comes in. Okay. Yeah. I'm wondering what, what it was that they were referring to because I've heard you know, you keep hearing all these words thrown around, but nobody's telling you why and how, right? Uh -huh. um, yeah. So, okay. Yeah, I've been doing the intermittent fasting and I feel fabulous. It just, right? really, yeah. 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 Difference. Well, all yeah. the things that I'm implementing that you suggested, um, I, you know, I can't thank you enough. Oh. Um, anything else? I mean, what, what would you suggest for us as, as most of us, of course, right now is COVID. So our life has changed. Yes. Right. Um, our life is a little more sedentary, maybe for some, maybe a little more isolated for others, maybe a little more stressful, um, you know, all these factors. So mm -hmm. what, what, what would be something beneficial that we could do to help us? Right. For right. Example, to help our, our immunity in, in our respiratory system. Exactly. Or, exactly just to make sure that our immune system is um, healthy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, like definitely having a good routine. If I can get good sleep, that's also going to help my immune system. And I, I do think it is important for us to do some sort of exercise, right? Because if I can get my body moving, it's kind of like a washing machine. It's going to help me detox, get the circulation going. So whatever exercise you prefer, whether it's walking, yoga, weights, biking, I just want you to move in a way. And I'm not saying I understand because of COVID, if gyms aren't open and you don't want to work out with the mask, you could do it at home, maybe even put on a video, follow along and do some sort of exercise at home. The other thing I would focus on, and that's where I have an issue with what's going on in the world, that in, on, on the news, they never talk about diet. Right, because sugar will definitely suppress your immune system, cause more stress in the body. So we should all start there. We should cut back on sugars, even a lot of carbs like breads and pastas. Focus more on the whole foods, our protein, our veggies, healthy fats, and consume a lot of those things to help build up the immune system. And even water, I'm sure when we're home, we're not so like we're not on point about drinking our water, but we should at least drink half of our body weight in ounces of water every single day. So if I weigh 120 pounds, mm -hmm. so we're talking about 60 ounces? Exactly. At least 60 ounces every single day. Yeah. Yeah. And then there are some vitamins I, I do like. I'm a big fan of vitamin D. Vitamin D can help boost up the immune system. It's also going to protect our bones. Every, every, that's what we should be talking about. We should be all on vitamin D. They're actually doing a lot of studies with vitamin D and COVID in Spain, I noticed. They had people even take about 200,000 IUs of vitamin D, and they were doing really well. I'm not saying you need to do that much. Even if we took about 5,000 IUs based on the labs, every day that can also help the immune system. Okay, yeah. so vitamin D, yeah. Vitamin D and zinc is another great thing right now that's also helping with the virus. I would take even five to 10 milligrams of zinc every single day. 
And I also like vitamin C. Vitamin C is very good for the immune system. So focusing on even getting one to two grams of vitamin C every single day. So we're talking, I mean, we're talking about preventative medicine. Yes, exactly, exactly. Because I think we need to focus on that before we get sick. Exactly, because if I, you know, I don't want to get sick, but if I do, I'm sure I can fight it off a lot easily if my immune system is stronger. So that's what we want. That's the only thing we have control over, right? If I can help my body be a little bit stronger, that's that's it. That's that's what our focus should be. Right. Yeah. Yes. Um, you know, as you well know, because you know my history, I had MS and I was able to beat it. Um, and, and I was able to beat it through all the things we're talking about because testing was part of my process as well. Once I, I got myself on my feet and was on my way to feeling better. Um, but I think it's important that we, that we understand the role of having somebody like you in our lives mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, because it's, it's, you're a partner. Right, right. And so, um, and to, to address our health before we get sick. Exactly. Because I believe that I became sick because I was eating things that I was allergic to. I, I mean, there was no diet, no doubt. Most of my, my diet was composed of things that I was allergic to. Um, so I, I, guess, I guess my question is, Dr. Kaur, if, if you feel you're healthy and if you feel everything's fine, um, what, what would you suggest those things to make sure that you don't miss? Right, right. Yes. Cause you know, we can all think we're healthy because we feel good, but doesn't mean that our immune system is strong. Right. Right. So I suggest that everybody should at least see an integrated physician once a year. Okay. Get your basic labs done, your sugars, cholesterol, insulin levels are important. Right, get your sugars uh, checked, like even the A1C, and I'm picky on that. That's the average sugar level over the last three months. Uh -huh. I like it less than 5.2 because I want to prevent diabetes or body from developing a lot of inflammation from the sugar. Uh -huh. And even getting your thyroid tested and getting your vitamin D and B12 and actually magnesium as well. I find a lot of people are deficient in magnesium and that could be easily checked through the blood test. So even yeah. if you just those basic labs once a year, just to make sure you are staying up par and everything is healthy, yes. Okay, so just making sure that you are on your course the way you <laughs> need to be, right? Yes. Okay, yeah. now th there's one word that I keep hearing over and over and over, and I think I know the meaning of it, but I'm not really sure, so and that's inflammation. Yes. That it's, um, can you tell us what inflammation is? That's true. That's a good point, right? Because it's it happens in the body, but it's happening due to something else. Whether if I'm eating food that's causing the problem, right? Or whether it's nutrient deficiencies because my body isn't able to fight off that um, process. But the inflammation typically occurs due to a reason. It's, it's not just happening because of an injury, right? You think inflammation, oh, I hurt my, maybe I hurt my thumb someplace and it's full and that's inflammation. Right. That's what I think but, of when you say inflammation. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but it could be in the entire body, MS, inflammation of the brain, right? But you're right. It came from something else occurring. And it could be even like some people are like, I'm foggy, I'm tired. I'm like, even yeah, that's inflammatory. Right. Yeah. So even like those little aches and pains can be due to inflammation in the body. And there are good tests to check inflammation, but they're not as accurate. Like said rate and C-reactive protein and inflammation markers. But I don't find them to be true. I think we need to look at even insulin and sugar just to make sure that I'm not eating anything that can flare up that inflammation. That could contribute the, to that it, initial inflammation that was there already. Is what yes. I okay. Yeah. Okay. But so the inflammation, so we, when we say inflammation of the brain, mm -hmm. what is happening in our brains? Right. Yeah. 
what 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 is that process that's happening now? yes yes your body starts to fight what what is supposed to be doing how it's supposed to function how it controls your muscles and nerves and it's not able to do that anymore so it's off kilter basically correct okay. yeah so it's not that something has become swollen no exactly it's just off kilter yeah okay okay so um in my case for example when you have the myelin sheath breaking right. away and you have those short circuits in the brain those lesions in the brain that you would call inflammation inflammation yep so the, that imbalance right okay all righty so through the integrative medicine then let me let me see if i understood correctly you bring the body back to a homeostasis to a home mm -hmm. to that where everything is in balance. Am I correct? Yeah. Correct. Um, do you recommend relaxation techniques or anything? Exactly, exactly, yes. Breathing exercises are great, right? Even doing that before bedtime to relax, meditation, yes. That's important, right? Because we're so wound up and with hearing everything on the news, but that can stress the body out even more and overwhelm the immune system. So you're right, maybe turning off the news, meditating and praying, however, whichever method you prefer, but something to relax the body. Yes, so the whole, the whole system. Well, system. Yes. No part is separate. The brain and the mind are not separate from the body, right? No, <laughs> no. So, I know you're, I know I've taken a lot of your time and I really appreciate it. But one last thing, yes, yes, yes. if you were to tell somebody, mm -hmm. it, what do you think, give us a piece, your piece of advice that that, that which you think is very important. I'm sure all of it is important, right? but um, to help us get on, on the path to health, if health we're not, yeah. and right. to help us understand that we need to find the path to mm -hmm. health. Mm -hmm. I think if like one thing I do want everybody to focus on, even if you start off with cutting back on the sugar, right? Whether that's just doing the small things, maybe cutting out that coffee with the sugar, or if it's the soda, anything you can do to just make those small changes with the sugar, because sugar is the real enemy. It is, it is. Our brain is mostly fat, right? 70% fat. But if I'm taking a lot of sugar, that can overwhelm the brain. To actually, to the extent that they're starting to call even Alzheimer's type three diabetes, yeah. right? Because they're noticing sugar is overwhelming the brain. So I, I request everybody if you can just start on one thing is cutting back on the sugar. Do you consider honey sugar? You know that's not as bad. I don't mind the maple syrup, honey. I just don't want to add the processed sugars into okay. them. Yeah. What about like turbinado sugar? Do you consider that the same as like white sugar? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So even they have something um, called juggery, you know, that, that. Yes. Sugar, yes. Still sugar. Yes. I still, <laughs> I still okay. see it causing the insulin going up. So I, you know, that, that's where I, yeah. Well, I'm trying to find my way around it, but there's exactly. a way around it, right? <laughs> So um, our best bet is to just leave it aside as much as we can. Yes. Um, what, and then one last thing, processed mm -hmm. foods, packaged food, bagged Pack food. Exactly, exactly. How that's do you the, feel about those? Because that those have a lot of the trans fats. That, that's the issue. They've corrupted the foods to make it last longer, but that's the real enemy that's affecting the health. And that's why I'm sure we're also sick now because our food is so processed. So starting there too, like focusing more on the outer side of the grocery store, buying the whole foods, the meats, and not the packaged foods. Thank you. Thank you. I, I personally am very grateful to you. Um, I know the work that you're doing is great work. And um, I could not be more grateful. And um, I'm so happy to share you and um, share what you do. And... Um, I know you're very busy and I thank you for your time. Remember, no sugar, stay away from the sugar. That's the bottom line, right? Yes. <laughs> so that's the bottom line with Dr. Cora and she's absolutely right, I know. Um, thank you so much. I will be seeing you soon. Yes. Um,
Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You're awesome.